morning, church. How are we all doing this morning? It's a glorious day. Uh, to those at home, we want to say welcome. Uh, we thank you for your presence here today. Uh, for our visitors, uh, again, we are thankful you're here. We have information in the pew racks in front of you if you'd like to learn more about our congregation. And we have uh, free uh, welcome bags for you also. Um, and if you know anything about the life of this church, you know uh, the first uh, full week or the first week of October is our rummage sale week. And so that is starting next week. I've got a couple of announcements about that. Um, we still, I think, are accepting uh, rummage in some of your items. Um, you'll find more information in the bulletin. But we're also this year having a nativity sale on Thursday. You'll find that in the bulletin as well, in which we have been collecting nativities over the years for Festival of the Nativities, but uh, now we want to have a chance for you to come and make a donation and uh, uh, take what you'd like. So um, that is on Thursday, and then on Saturday the 5th, um, that is our rummage sale breakdown, and we need lots of volunteers to come in and help with that, and again, you can find more information uh, in your bulletin. And so um, I think that's all that we... Oh, also, uh, beyond the pulpit, uh, our pastoral Bible study on Sunday mornings, uh, since we're fellowshipping in the parlor today, uh, beyond the pulpit, we'll meet in the sanctuary here at 11 o'clock. And we have our regular Sunday school down for the kids. And uh, also, a final reminder, we have no Tuesday morning Bible study uh, this week because of all of the activity uh, with the rummage sale. And so now uh, we're going to move our introit uh, up, and so let us now prepare our hearts and our minds uh, to worship our Lord and Savior in spirit and in truth. Now I'd like to invite uh, Nance Lenz, who's the chair of our uh, Mission and Fellowship Committee. She's going to talk to us about uh, a church that we've been supporting in the past, but uh, we're doing it more formally uh, this year. So, Thank Nance. you. Minute for Missions. The Mission and Fellowship Committee of Westminster Presbyterian Church of Austin has been asked by Gathak, a member of our congregation, to supply worship equipment to the Westminster Presbyterian Church of Gambala in Ethiopia. They're in need of Bibles, robes, keyboards, speakers, soundboard, and microphones to help their worship. As a committee, we have agreed to supply them with $1,500 from our mission and fellowship giving budget and $1,500 from our Loaves and Fishes Faith Forward Fund for these startup expenses. We are excited to see this sistership grow in Ethiopia. Gathak, will you come forward? I present this to you with wonderful faith for your sistership. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Go ahead. 
Good morning. Good morning. Uh, that's a wonderful day to me. Uh, I will go back a little bit. First, my tongue day go fast. If you don't not, he don't know hear me. He's okay. Uh, I will go back a little bit for my history. Since 2019, I came here in Austin. Here. Uh, when I came here in Austin, I came with my kid. I have a seven kid. The biggest one, my person, I left it in Foreland, Maine. I came here. The first day I will come in here in the church, all my kids are very small. The big one, Nyabang, he is 17 years old. That is 16 and go down. I sang this huge. Uh, when I've been here, my little girl, Nyan Yik, Pastor Mike, and uh, Antoke, they welcome me with Nyan Yik. That day, I don't have any job. Pastor Mike, they take responsibility, and Antoke, they take responsibility for my kid. They take the picture for my daughter. They give you the congregation here. This is a new people in church. I sang this church because when I come here, I am a one color person. It's all here. I continue with you until I become members of the church. I've been along with you here. Uh, 2021, I come to Pastor Mike, I say I like this Westminster church because become my family church. All my kids now, they grew up. I just I remain for two kids right now. All those, they gone. All that, they graduate here in high school. Just accept Nyabang and David. Matthew, you graduate here. Nyanyi, you graduate here. Mike, you graduate here in the school. This church become my family church. When I think that, I say this church, I will give this gift to my parents back home. The one who runs this church right now, it's my nephew, because I love those people. 2021, that's why the church began. But 2022 is COVID-19. I cannot represent nobody come here. 2013, 2013, I have a lot of things they offer to me. Now, thank you so much, everybody. Oh, sorry, but I don't introduce myself. Maybe that is a newcomer. My name is Gathak, Gathak Yang. That's why the last name of my kid. My last name is Rad. I love this huge. I love you all those people. You the people here. Yeah my congregation. I love you very much. I love Pastor much because they welcome me to this church. I love you all. Nobody look me like a different before. Everybody they say hi to me. Everybody they care to, to my kid. I love this church. That's why I talk like this church in Africa. This year, when I just tablet the church, they asked me because this time it is time for technology. Any church they need the what they not say before. They need a panel, they need everything, they need that. I say, okay, I just come to talk to Pastor Mike. That's why nobody knows that that is a church in Ethiopia. 
I think that now he have a two year or three year. That's huge for Gambela, that's huge. Now they grew up. They grew up now become a huge. And future, I hope Pastor Mike or somebody they can go to see what they did. That's why you see they came with the ship because they need outing. This time, you know, like before, people, they just in the, go to church. Now they need family, they need what? The kid, they need play and all those things. That's why I've been here today. Uh, God bless this church. God bless congregation, the people of God. God bless Pastor Mike to go out. I love Pastor Mike very much. Because when I talk to him, they listen to me. They don't care. I have access or I have that, they understand me. Maybe some people of you don't, don't understand me, but the person might, they understand what I'm talking about. They know what I'm talking about. Thank you so much. Uh, I go too long. Uh, <laughs> I go too long. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, that's why I just am going to be talking. Thank you. God bless you all people. They control that. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're going to pray a blessing over Gathak, but also the, the congregation in Gambala, Ethiopia, Westminster Presbyterian Church. Um, and so these, the money that we're giving will go to aid their worship and aid the pronouncement of Jesus Christ uh, all over this globe. Uh, so let's pray a blessing. Reach your hands towards us as uh, we feel the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Heavenly God, we praise you and thank you for Gathak and um, his passion and his calling. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that he is uh, compassionate towards uh, his family in Ethiopia and Gambala, and he wants the word of God spread. So, Lord, we, we value him as a, uh, a brother in Christ. In him and his family, Lord, we love them. We thank them for all they have done. But Lord, we pray a blessing upon this coming church, the church that now exists in uh, Africa, with, uh, and now that we share a name with them, uh, Lord, let us share more than just a name. Let us share a vision and a passion and uh, a hope for the spread of the gospel. And so, Lord God, we pray a blessing upon them, and we thank you and love you for Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we worship. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Blessings. Now with that, let us stand for our opening hymns. Uh, we're going to be singing Healer of Every Ill, uh, hymn number 630, and they'll know we are Christians, hymn number 595. Let's stand together and sing to one God with one voice.
Will you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, we praise you for this wonderful day. As we gather in your name, please let us hear your words, your scriptures, and feel your love for each other. Help us to serve you with great passion, with great concern for others, and help us grow closer to you each and every day. Please guide us and teach us your ways of love, your compassion, your patience, and your forgiveness. We love you and we need you. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated. Today's scripture is Genesis 4, verses 1 through 9 in your bulletin or in the page 3 of your pew Bibles. Now the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was the keeper of the sheep, and Cain a tiller of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel for the part brought of his first firstlings of his flock their fat portion. The Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why are your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door. Its desire is in you, but you must master it. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Praise God for his word today. Thank you.
We are uh, so blessed to have our Westminster Strings with us, led by uh, Sue Radloff. They do a wonderful job, and I was listening to them warm up this morning, and Sue was, uh, they were rehearsing, and Sue said, okay, do it again, uh, but do it with a rich, chocolatey sound. And I have no idea what that means. It made me hungry, but uh, that was very rich and chocolatey, so thank you. Um, we're going to move right into our, our prayer time. Um, uh, if you have any joys and concerns, I'd encourage you to put those on a, a prayer card, and we will have our prayer team pray over them uh, this week. Uh, but a couple of additions. Um, I did want to pray for Joanna Clark. Joanna Clark, um, she is in St. Mark's now in the nursing home. Uh, she is on hospice. I um, uh, had a nice visit with her yesterday. So she's doing well, but uh, her health is beginning to fail. Uh, so we will pray for her. Um, also, we're going to pray for Nikki Nelson. Uh, Nikki is having a biopsy on Wednesday over in Rochester. So we're going to uh, pray over that. Um, we'll also pray for our uh, sister church in uh, Gimbala, Ethiopia. And also another church that have, it's kind of nested here. Uh, Ministerio Monte de Sion is a Hispanic congregation uh, that has been meeting here on Friday nights and Saturday, Sunday nights uh, for the last year, and this is their one-year anniversary uh, next uh, on October 5th, so we'll just pray a blessing over them as well. And so now let us uh, go before our God. I also want to pray for Cindy Jays. Uh, Cindy is uh, still struggling, and now the pain is moving um, and so um, we just pray for uh, clarity and wisdom and, and help from the medical community so they can figure out what's going on. So um, we will uh, offer prayers for Cindy. Uh, so let us uh, go before our God in prayer. And then when I'm done, we will pray the Lord's Prayer, which will be up on the screen behind me. Uh, let us pray. Our Heavenly God, we enter into your presence this morning with gratitude uh, with peace in our hearts, and with uh, thanksgiving um, in our lives. Uh, Lord, we praise you for all that you do for us, uh, for the gifts, uh, the blessings, and the community that you have created here at Westminster. Uh, we praise you for that, Lord. Uh, God, we also know that we are all struggling with individual issues, uh, so we ask now that you will hear us in a time of silent meditation as we open up our hearts to you, Lord. We ask that you will hear our prayers. And we thank you, Lord, for listening to the, the cries of our hearts um, and the meditations of our minds, and we thank you that you are responding to these needs. Uh, Lord, we do lift up these names that have been brought before us. We pray for Carol Ann, Trudy Brady's mother, who is dealing with severe arthritic pain. We ask for a blessing in her life. Uh, we pray for Cindy Jays, uh, continuing to, to lift her up as uh, she's now experiencing more pain. Um, we ask that uh, you will uh, heal her body, that you will miraculously lay your hands upon her and take this pain from her. And Lord, we pray this expectantly and hopefully, and we also pray for the medical staff to, to find ways to, to treat uh, this, whatever is happening, and to, to help alleviate the pain. Uh, God, we thank you again for the, the blessing of life of Mark Monroe as we celebrated his life last weekend. Um, God, just continue to pour into the family as they live into the legacy that Mark has left. Uh, we praise you for uh, Nance Lenz. Uh, being sober for 40 years this past week. Uh, we thank you for the victory that you have poured into her life. Uh, but Lord, as she knows, this is a day-to-day -day walk. And so we know that she can only do it as she walks with you. So continue to pour your presence into her and her life. We pray for David Yoon, a uh, missionary we support as he is traveling uh, this week to uh, China and Korea uh, for a month-long trip. We pray just for the, the gospel to be shared in that region and for uh, the churches there to be strengthened and encouraged. Um, Lord, we praise you for uh, Jason Barron's dad, Ken, who is 
uh, doing better and home from the hospital. And we continue to, to pour, I pray that you'll pour into his life. Uh, we praise you for a Mason who celebrated his uh, first birthday this past week. And uh, there have been times where we didn't think that would happen. Uh, but we know, Lord, he is a wonderful little boy, and we just uh, pray that you'll continue to, to walk with him and his family. Uh, Lord, we lift up our church, sister church in Gambala, Ethiopia. Uh, pray for them as they worship today. Just pour into their life as a congregation. Uh, we continue to pray for Nikki as she's going to be having her biopsy this Wednesday. Just pray for peace and clarity uh, that will come from that. Uh, Lord, we lift up uh, Joanne Clark. Uh, pray for your presence in her life as her health begins to waver. Um, and God, we pray a blessing upon Monte um, uh, Ministerio Monte de Sion as a faithful congregation who have met for a year now here in our building. Uh, just continue to bless them and to pour your spirit out through them and upon them, Lord. And so God, we thank you for all that you do for us in our lives, and we pray for your peace to continually flow over us. And now, Lord, let us uh, pray together the prayer uh, that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I'll invite the ushers forward to receive this morning's offering. And as we do, let us give out of our hearts and give back the blessings that God has poured out upon us. Lord, we ask that you will bless these gifts and use them to the furtherance of your kingdom both here on earth and in heaven above, so that all may know of your love and all may feel your glory. We praise you and thank you. Amen.
Now please turn to your neighbor and give them the blessing of shalom this morning. If you return to your seats, I'd like to invite up the children this morning. So let's have our kids come on up for a children's sermon. And we got a few out there. Come on up. Good job. How are you guys doing? All right. We got some girls coming in. Come on. They look super excited to, to come. Right, there's more coming. All right. Okay, we're going to start by uh, everybody. We're going to have you warm up your faces. Okay, so everybody can rub your cheeks. Come on, rub your cheeks. There you go. Make funny. Uh, good. Okay, now I want you, everybody turn and look at me. Everybody turn and look at me. There you are. I want everybody to give me your best smiley face. <laughs> Micah, that's nice. Oh, I love it. Okay, now everybody give me your best grumpy face. Very nice. Okay, I want you to stand up, and we're going to see if our congregation can follow you guys. So everybody stand up. Okay. So I won't warm all your faces up. You're already warm enough. Um, so I want everybody to give me your biggest smiley face. What do you think? Are they doing a good job out there? Okay, everybody give me your best grumpy face. Mm. Helps if you growl. There we go, Shirley. I like it. <laughs> Very nice. Well, we're going to be focusing on that, so let's, you stay together. So which face are you going to have if somebody... Uh, out on the playground, is it nice to you? What kind of face are we going to have? Grumpy, right? I don't see too many grumpy faces out there. Um, maybe they like that. What if somebody shares a snack with you? Hey, we're going to have a smiley face, right? Oh, come on, where's that smiley face? <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty tired for too early for a smiley face. Um, what happens if somebody in your class um, says something not nice to you? Smiley or grumpy? I think we're going with grumpy, right? But what happens if somebody walks over and says, hey, do you want to be my friend? That's a smiley face, right? Well, okay, now I want you all to sit down and, and look back up at me. Because we've been talking about peace, pursuing peace as a church. But I know that's kind of a hard thing to understand. As a, what is peace? Well, I kind of like it this. If we've got peace in our life, we're going to have a smile. We're going to be happy. We're going to be filled with joy. But if we don't have peace, we're going to be grumpy. We're not going to be nice to people. People aren't going to be nice to us. And so when we talk about pursuing peace, we need to accept the love that Jesus gives us because what Jesus did, is that a smiley face or a grumpy face? That's a smiley face because Jesus loves us. So if we want peace in our lives, we need to accept his love. But then if we want other people to have a smiley face, we need to give that love to them. So when I'm mean to my brothers and sisters, is that giving people peace? No, that's getting a grumpy face. But if I tell my parents, yes, I'll do the chores today. 
That's a smiley face, and that gives them peace. So these are just some ways in, in your guys' lives that you can share peace with the people around you. And that's what we're going to be talking about today in Scripture. Our verse is, God bless you, our verse is, greater love uh, than this is to, uh, the no man has and to lay his life down for someone else. So when we sacrifice for someone else, that's how we share love. Does that sound good? Okay, so are we going to go out of here with grumpy faces? Yes, I heard that. We're going to go out of here with smiley faces. So let's pray to our God. Lord God, we thank you that you give us peace. We thank you that we can share peace with others. So let us all be um, uh, peace sharers this week with our friends, with our families, um, and with you. So Lord, we love you and praise you. In your name, amen. Okay, everybody run out of here with smiley faces. Uh, Brooke is in the back to take you to Children's Church, or you can go sit with your parents. Okay, so I'm going to start my sermon. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Now, we have been walking through how to share peace, how to pursue peace. And today our focus is on uh, choosing compassion over competition. Because, again, we spent the first few weeks talking about an inward peace. But now we're focused on an outward peace. How do we share that peace with others? And so I want to have you open up to 1 John uh, chapter 3. It is on page 240 of your pew Bibles in the New Testament. We're going to be reading uh, verses 11 through 18. So again, you can open up and follow along. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning that we should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. For we know that they have passed from death to life because we love one another. All who hate a brother or sister are murderers, and you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does, God lo how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. Lord God, we thank you for your word this morning, and we ask your blessing um, upon our lives so that we can walk and live in that truth. In your name, amen. Well, John's letters... Uh, this is the first of his three letters, not to be confused with this gospel or to be confused with revelations that he wrote. These are the letters that he writes to the church, and they are all about relationships of the disciples in the church. Uh, one author, Tony Morita, refers to this as the embodiment of relationships. And what that means specifically is a face-to-face -face relationship a 3D relationship, relationships that go beyond, I'm, I'm preaching the truth here, that go beyond our phones, that go beyond Facebook, that go beyond Instagrams, that go beyond Zoom calls. These are all wonderful advancements of technology, but an embodied relationship is a relationship that can touch can care, can cry, can laugh. That is the relationship that we are being called into in Scripture. And this is not a sermon against technology, but if we spend less time on our phones and on social media, it's probably not going to be a bad thing. 
But we as believers are called to embody the true sense of relationship that God has called us to. If we want to pursue peace with our friends, with our families, with our neighbors, with our co-workers, we must live beyond our virtual lifestyles. We are whole physical beings, hearts, souls, minds, bodies, and we are created for relationship to pour into this reality. We are called to a physical compassion. I believe that what can be frustrating about technology and our virtual existence is that we are more than just a hashtag. We are more than just an emoji or an avatar or a meme. We are flesh and blood. We are multi-layered, complicated individuals who need to love, to live, and to laugh with each other in real time and in a real space. A few years ago, some of the parents out there remember the, um, the sensation of Flat Stanley. We are not Flat Stanleys. We are real three-dimensional people that need those relationships around us. We need to connect. We need to interact. We need to deeply love and commit to others. And that goes, behind, goes beyond a live streaming, work remotely, texting rather than talking, social media craving lifestyle. We must create compassion in our relationships. See, a two-dimensional lifestyle turns us into us versus them. It creates competition rather than compassion. And that is what John in his letters was encouraging us to focus on. Listen to his example in 2 John 12. He's writing to the church. He says, I have much to write to you, but I do not want to use paper or ink. Instead, I want to visit you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be made complete. Now, if John were writing this today, I think pen and paper would have been replaced uh, with texting and instant messaging. But he wants all of us to be connected and to live into the relationships of peace that we need to form. Peace in our own hearts and peace uh, in the lives of others. This is how our joy will be made complete. And we have the example of Jesus Christ to follow. For Jesus Christ was the greatest example of, in history of an embodied relationship. Listen to John 1.14. The Word, Jesus Christ, became flesh and made His dwelling among us. Eugene Peterson writes in the message, and I love this saying, yeah, of the incarnation. He says that Jesus moved into the neighborhood. Jesus Christ moved into the neighborhood of humanity because he wanted to share and to show his compassion for each one of us. And that's what the incarnation of Christ is all about. It is the story of redemption. It is the story of salvation. And it is the story of of peace. And so we are called to live out that same incarnation with those around us. And as we do, we will find peace. And it will be a peace that is filled with compassion rather than competition. For we know that when we choose to remain separated and unattached, compassion is replaced with a sense of competition. I wonder, just thinking of your own lives, how many of us have ever sat behind a computer screen or a device looking at an elevated lifestyle of someone else and haven't felt that uh, pang of competition within us? Or maybe we've watched a news show or listened to a podcast of our divided country and we begin viewing these peoples as our enemies rather than our neighbors. 
Or how many of us are so wrapped up in our own worldly pride, in our own self-centeredness, that we can't even see our brothers and sisters in need? That's what competition in a culture and a community creates. Us versus them. Today we see in both of our passages one of the greatest examples of what negative competition can do. And it's through the, the relationships between two brothers, Cain and Abel. We see the consequences of competition. First, in verse 4 of Genesis, Genesis chapter 4, verse 5. Listen to what it says about Cain. But on Cain and his offering, God did not look with favor. So Cain became angry, and his face was downcast. That's the first thing that competition breeds, is hatred towards someone or something else. Cain felt that he was not valued in God's eyes. But it wasn't because of his offering. It was because of his heart. We hear in John's letter that Cain's heart was filled with evil. And so competition breeds hatred. But competition also breeds resentment. John in his letter says, Do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. This competition created resentment. Cain saw the blessing of Abel's offering and what God had done for him. And so because of that, from that moment on, Cain sent his, set his heart towards murdering his brother. And that's the last thing that competition leads ultimately to death, a spiritual death, but in this case, a physical death. In Genesis 4, 8, now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. That is what competition amongst our brothers and sisters can create in our own lives and our own hearts. It can create a hatred that leads to resentment, that leads to a physical, maybe hopefully not a physical death, but a spiritual death in which we allow evil to enter into our own lives, but into the relationships of the people around us. Now, some of you might say, well, uh, I'm a pretty competitive guy or gal. And we all have that spirit within us, and there is healthy competition. I've committed my life to sports and uh, playing them, coaching them, um, and watching them. Now that my body can't really do much of <laughs> anything else, right, Pete? <laughs> Just had this conversation. But competition, I think, builds, it makes us stronger. It, it builds strength and it, it builds resolve. But it can also tear us down. And I want to share one example with you. Um, for many years, my, youngest, my oldest son, Tommy, was involved in youth summer base, baseball. Uh, he was very successful. Uh, he uh, oh, played with the same group of guys, a lot of the same coaches, for 10, 12 years. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and they would get together, and uh, every summer we would have the regular teams that we would play and then try to make it to the playoffs. And um, our biggest rival... Uh, I know Cindy Goskison is out there, but our, our biggest rival in Austin was Albert Lee. I don't want to hear the boos or the hisses. Um, but every year, um, uh, the rivalry was such that every year one of the goals of the team was to beat Albert Lee. And I know for a fact that one of their goals was to beat Austin. And there was definitely a healthy competition that grew between the two groups of boys and coaches on family and fans. But there was also an occasion that that uh, healthy competition would turn towards animosity. And it would create a division. And sometimes the games would get a little feisty. And these kids would play each other, not just in baseball, they'd play each other in basketball and football and all the other sports. So this competition built and built. 
But then one summer, I think it was the last summer they played, um, Austin didn't have enough for a team, didn't have enough coaches either. Albert Lee didn't have enough coaches or players. And so the powers that be decided to join the two teams together for their final year of summer youth baseball. Those of us on the outside thought that this was perhaps the worst idea ever. I even remember sitting at the first game and two crusty old guys behind me um, were talking about it. 40 years I've never seen these two teams play together. Um, and just how uh, they didn't think it was a good idea. And at the beginning, I would agree with them. And I had coached these kids and uh, supported them and my son as well. Um, and it was hard to see kind of their roles start changing. and Maybe another playing be, uh, being elevated over them from another team. And it was difficult to begin with. And I knew that there was a sense of resentment. There was even a sense of hatred and anger. And there was a sense of this just isn't worth doing. It was growing at the beginning. But then the more these kids played together, a funny thing happened. They realized that they started to like each other. They got to know each other. They got to support each other, both as friends and as uh, teammates. And what was shaped from the beginning of the year to the end was a team that played hard, that supported, that rooted, that encouraged uh, everyone, regardless of whether they were um, 20 miles apart or not. And the same started happening in the fans, with the families and the coaches as well. And I realize it's just a baseball game. It's just a, a team of youth playing together. But to me, that was the example of how you turn competition into compassion. You embody relationships together. No longer do you view the other one as the enemy, but rather as your partner, your teammate. And as you do that, then friendship, compassion, and togetherness will grow. Now, I know that there might be some examples of this that we just think that could never happen, um, i.e. Vikings and Packers fans who play today. Um, I want to see you all in the fellowship hall or in the parlor um, laughing it up. But that is what we need to do as believers. We must turn competition into compassion. And this is what John is telling us in his letter. He says first that compassion builds connection. Verse 11, for this is the message you've heard. We should love one another. Compassion will build connection based on love. As we love the people around them, we're no longer competitors. We are connected Believers, we are connected friends, we are connected followers of Christ. Secondly, compassion enables sacrifice. Uh, verse uh, 16, this is how we know what love is. So he first says, love one another. And then in verse 16, he tells us what love is. And it is this, Jesus Christ laid his life for us laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. That's the task that is facing the church. How do we lay down our lives for brothers and sisters within the body, but also for brothers and sisters outside the body? How do we compassionately share Jesus Christ with those around us? We don't do it through judgment. We don't do it through condemnation. We don't do it through the, the raised eyebrow and kind of the, the turn of the shoulder to walk away. We do it through accepting people regardless of who they are. Whatever status they may hold in life, whatever condition life has brought upon them, whatever situation they're dealing with, that is who we need to love. And we do so by sharing the compassion of Christ. And it fosters the final aspect of compassion. It fosters community. 
Listen to verses 17 and 18. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us love with words and speech. Let us love not with words and speech, but with actions and truth. As we love with actions and truth, we will choose compassion. We will choose a better way than Cain. Cain was consumed by anger, deception, violence, deceit, and arrogance. But when we choose compassion, we are choosing the better offering. We are choosing Abel's offering, that which will glorify our God. Brothers and sisters, we have been given the greatest example of compassion, again, through Jesus Christ. We are to be Christ-like. We are to be Christ followers. That happens when we love people, not when we seek to be better than others. Not when we choose competition. So today, as we go forth, let us go forth living out an embodied relationship with others. Let us do so through the compassion we share. And as we do, we will create peace in our hearts and in the world around us. Amen? Amen. Thank you. And let's please stand for a closing hymn sent forth by God's blessing, hymn number 712. Let us stand together. our benediction we invite everyone to get your coffee and uh, treats and join together in fellowship in the parlor you can also step out on our patio it's a beautiful morning out there um, and we will be having beyond the pulpit back here in the sanctuary uh, a little bit after 11 and the children have their sunday school and the youth as well down in the children and youth ministry wing so now let us receive the blessing from our god you go forth in the power peace and protection of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.